Hello, my name is Wayne Holloway-Smith. I'm a lecturer in creative writing at the University of Hertfordshire and a poet. My recent collection, which is called Love Minus Love, um, is shortlisted for the T.S. Eliot Prize, which is um, one of the big things that I'd hope to achieve in my career. And recently I also won the National Poetry Competition. Much of my uh, work deals with family. I come from a working class background where the bourgeois ideals of a 2.4 family and happiness and a couple of cars and a semi-detached house, etc. wasn't really um, the thing. So I'm using my work to kind of establish a vocabulary through which I can develop an understanding on my own selfhood, how it was produced through the experiences that I've had. Previously, I'd um, published a bunch of pamphlets and um, a first debut collection called Alarum, which I was lucky enough to get picked up, uh, which was lucky enough to get picked up by Blood Axe Books, who I'd always aspired to be published by. Um, I'm going to read a few. So this this collection, Love Minus Love, is um, one long fragmentary piece of work, but I'm going to read a few sections from it that I think are applicable to the theme of family. Keep the photo of my dad smoking and looking like James Dean. I've been so lovingly breathed into by the empty promise of that cigarette. That kiss-curled head in his black and white photo, he is my age or younger. He is maybe 15 in that photo, back-knuckled to his own dad's barn door. He is slender in two tight jeans. He is going to do something shallow, soon and very bad. I'm trying hard to follow his example, but I don't want to die. I can't seem to lift a heavy thing or get into fights past the lighter. I just like smoking and watching TV. Silent, like his photo. In his eulogy, they said he loved beef, always beef in his sandwiches. His hair is receding. He is being very attractive in his photo. He's going to do something very soon. He is gone. It's already done. Here's your mother. She is sleeping, dressed in ostentatious pink, in the passenger seat of a brown beige Vauxhall Cavalier. Her hair done, perfect, curated. The windows done, uptight. The exhaust fumes are your father gently filling up the car. This next bit is... Um, based on experience I had where uh, I went to a hypnotist to try and give up smoking and he, uh, well, I feel a bit mean about it now. I want you to leave your body now, he tells me. His voice not so much hypnotic as reaching for the hypnotic. But I leave it anyway, sitting in the upright chair of the windowless room for a place that's higher up not quite the windowless room, though I'm aware of my body's particular kind of breathing down there, dressed in my favourite shirt. And somehow up here I'm dressed in that same shirt, which is, I feel, suddenly becoming very important. Its colour pertaining to a quiet hue of knowing I can't quite explain. And I do not think about the money I have given him, the man who is speaking. But I'm looking instead down on a yellow kitchen in Swindon upon a tiny remembered body I have found crying or about to cry in little white shorts. And there is carpet streaked with blue and there is the noise of a terrible thing that is happening. And there is summer outside with its other children. He doesn't understand, does he? Says the man. He is so young. And I understand a shirt that he will have to grow through all of the terrible things to fit. I can feel my body now, filling up the space inside its soft and lavender scented cotton.
this uh, next bit is I, I was doing work experience ages and ages ago at Bloomsbury and um, I had to read Pat, a Patty Smith autobiography called Just Kids and I remembered this from that uh, so I kind of co-opted it um, as a set of images or something. Here's your mother. She is Patty Smith and gazes hungry in November in 1969 in Manhattan in the Horn and Hardit automat upon a sandwich in a vending machine behind its glass with one less dime in her hand than she needs. Suddenly, your dad appears dressed as Allen Ginsberg, buys her the sandwich, and now she has to sit and listen to him talk about Walt Whitman for the rest of her life. But instead of talking about Walt Whitman, he is silent. Suddenly, they are both rotated 90 degrees to the left, and instead of an automat, there are only armchairs, a carpeted living room, a TV. This next little fragment is um, based upon a really unbelievable but kind of fun story that I read on three different um, websites. One story goes a man on his lunch break was hit by a falling baby falling from a very high window of a building the man was passing on his lunch break. The man saved the baby's life, accidentally getting landed on. The man saved that exact baby's life, accidentally getting landed on one exact year later on his lunch break breaking the slightly more grown baby falling from the same window's fall, accidentally. The man's name is Joseph Figlock. What is sad is, the realisation this baby could literally mean anything but doesn't. It does not. What I don't know is, whether that baby, a toddler by now, has fallen a third time, whether he is falling still and at this moment crying out, where is Joseph Figlock? I can't see him. Why isn't he here? Elsewhere, a man is cutting down a tree. He works at it night and day, his big heaving chest, grown tired, soaring at that thick trunk. After a long while, the tree is still standing, though at a tilt towards his house where his family sit. There is a pie in the oven, there are toys, the laughter of children. It is a beautiful home, but he's come this far and it's taken so much effort. <clears throat> this takes a moment from a film called Ghost, which is uh, incidentally my mum's favourite film um, and is sort of features Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze as her husband who is murdered and has to return to his um, wife uh, sort of through the body of Whoopi Goldberg, if, uh, if you can believe such a thing. Here's your mother. She is Demi Moore with short black hair. It's the early 90s. She's not got much on sitting at her pottery wheel. The righteous brothers are singing about love. It might be raining outside and dark and she's getting pretty messy there in all that clay. You might think, you might expect at this moment the well-toned, the shirtless husband to arrive behind her in tight black jeans, but nothing. Only the, rec the record spinning and the empty symbol of the half-finished jar lengthening on that wheel. Sundays, he cuts first his Yorkshire pudding. I cut first my Yorkshire pudding. She stands in the kitchen smoking. Later, he will say an unkind thing. The whole of the world is arranged around our television set. Later, I will step over his drunk white and out of work body. Sundays, 
She stands in the kitchen tenderizing a cow. The cow, of course, is dead and wrapped up in cling film. He stopped years ago cleaning his teeth. Years ago, he put his toothbrush away and turned his back on the bathroom sink for good. I cut first my Yorkshire pudding. She, she wears her endless wedding ring, removes her wedding ring to do the washing up alone. Later, he will say an unkind thing. I will step over his drunk white and out of work body. The cow, of course, is dead. The cow is covered in gravy now. There are also peas. Sunday, there was a tooth on his pillow, which he hid. He hid it. The whole of the world is arranged around that tooth now, in hiding, all the gaps in his mouth. Later, she will do the washing up, take off her ring. He will say an unkind thing, there are also peas. The television set is speaking to the room, the room is silent. I cut first my Yorkshire pudding. Again, I am zipped up and frantic with fear. The cow, of course, is dead honey glazed potatoes. The posh mums are boxing in the square, roughing each other up in a nice way. This is not the world into which I was born, so I'm changing it. I'm sinking deep into the past and dressing my own mum in their blue spandexes, svelte black stripes from hip to hem, and husbands with better dispositions toward kindness. Or at least, I'm giving her new lungs. I'm giving her a best friend with no problems and both of them pads, some gloves, to go at each other with, in a nice way. I'm making it a warm day for them, but also I'm making it rain. The two of them dapping it out in long shadows. I'm watching her from the trees grow, strength in her thighs. My mum grow strength in her glutes. My mum, her back tall upright, her knees. I'm watching her grow, no bad thing in her stomach, no tumour. Her feet do not hurt to touch. My mum, she is hopping. Sinews are happening. Wiry arms developing their full reach, no bad thing explodes. Sweat, and not gradual death, I'm cheering, no thing in her stomach, no alcohol, no cigarettes with their crotonaldehyde, let my dad keep those, no removal of her womb. And I'm cheering her on in better condition, cheering she is learning to fight for her own body, in spandex her new life. And though there is no beef between them, if her friend is gaining the upper hand, I will call out from the trees her name, Christine. And when she turns, as turns she must, my mum, in the nicest possible way, can slug her right in the gut. <laughs>